Okay? Is there any questions about this part? Yes? Uh, back to the last slides. Mm -hmm. Individual social capital. Yeah. This one? Or do you want the numbers or the equation? This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, individual social capital in this paper by Rocco is um, how people responded to the question about trust. Um, most people can be trusted or maybe most people really can't be trusted. And so it was a, 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 a zero to ten scale. I think I, think I might have that. Uh, oops, going the wrong way again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, here we are. Generally speaking, would you say that most people can be trusted or that you can't be too careful in dealing with people? Or only use only one question to... One question. And then that answer is sort of being recycled as community social capital. But to get that, you're defining you're not averaging across every, the individual response across everybody. You're averaging it across a, a reference group, a sort of more limited age group. So the reference group is the community? That's right. The average for the reference group is the community social capital in this study. Mm -hmm. rather than uh, association? Well, obviously we're interested in association because if there's no association, there can't be any causation. <laughs> um, but ultimately, I think we're interested in causation because if something causes something else, by impacting, if our policy can impact on the something, we can then obtain the effects on other things. Um, one approach for testing for causality is instrumental variables, yes. And is there any uh, effective instrument variables? Um, well, I don't overgeneralize, but instrumental variables, um, they're a great idea, but we, <laughs> we have great deal difficulty finding um, such variables. Again, part of the problem comes, we are typically using existing data sets. And the existing data sets have been designed for various reasons. They haven't usually been designed with testing, causation, and causality around about social capital in mind. So they're collecting the data for different reasons. Um, if you recall, um, you might not, on Friday afternoon, I showed you what data was now being routinely collected in England and being called social capital. And the, it was a set of responses from different surveys. So there's a crime survey that's annual that takes place each year and asks a, a random selection of people about their perception and experience of crime. And that's going on and it's going to be done anyway because policymakers are interested in um, well, or the level of crime because a survey will capture some that's unreported, things like that. So it's going to happen anyway. But then the statisticians in, in the, or the fiscal agency are taking some of the responses from that crime survey and turning them into social capital measures and things like that. Um, there's a European social survey where simultaneously in a number of countries each year or every few years a whole series of questions are being asked. Now this is because people are interested in comparing countries within Europe. And again, the statisticians from the fiscal agency are saying, oh, we could use some of those as part of our measure of social capital. And so it's, it's that problem that um, typically you're not starting with a blank sheet and saying, right, what would I really like to measure? 
and then going out and collecting it, what you're doing, and we all do this in our research to some extent, what you're doing is thinking, what data are available? Can I use it? And I think it's that issue which is causing us to, to not make as much progress as we might. But of course, it's much cheaper. I mean, it's much, it's a, a lower cost activity uh, to, to use data that's being collected for some other purpose. Yes? Um, could you go back to the table that was just Yeah. The, the, this one? Yes. Yeah. Um, when I'm looking at this table, is it, is it fair to say that individual social capital is a stronger predictor of someone's subjective health compared to uh, rather than community social capital? I think it is to say it, it, it's having, <coughs> quantitatively, it's having much more effect. So variations in individual social capital are having a much bigger effect. Um, also, statistically, there's a big confidence interval around this, whereas this is a, a tighter estimate. Um, st st the standard error of the estimate is much smaller. So in that sense, it's fair enough to say that. However, I guess if we think about implications for policy, which I'll be coming on to a bit more now, if you change community social capital, that's changed for everybody, potentially. And so, although the individual effect is small, you might be having that effect across a lot of people. If you change an individual's social capital or a group of individuals' social capital, it's having a big effect for them, but not so much impact on other people. So I guess what we can't really say is from a policy perspective yet, this is not enough information by itself to say which is more important. Um, also, I do come back to the idea that community social capital here is being argued to simply be a function of individual capital. Uh, it's not an average of all individuals, but an average of the reference group. Now, again, I... I come back to the idea that I think maybe there's something about community social capital which is m more than just the sum of the individuals. And this is saying really it is, it's just the individuals. 